You should have been a nun, you would have no other problems. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. Holy God, mighty God, we, we are covenanted people. From the moment we were baptized to now. But we haven't learned fully how to live in covenant. And the first time we, we were in covenant, he wanted to marry us. The builder marrying what he has produced. And so here we are to bow down. Here we are to worship. Here we are to say that you're my God. So bless this word to our hearts as we go through these covenants and make us strong in each of them because it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all God's people said. Amen. Okay, everybody with me? Get out your swords. Everybody got a sword? Go to Hosea 2. One more Hosea. You're very smart. Now, who wrote, what year are we going back to? We're going back to the 700s BC. 700s BC. This is one of my favorite time periods to study. A prophet does not predict the future as much as the prophet says, if you don't obey God, this will be your future. I would like to take you soon to, starting among ourselves, a Catholic prophetic conference here. I wish my friend Andrew Apostoli was still alive. I would call upon him immediately to come because I think he would be one of the foremost experts on that. But if not, we'll do it ourselves. And maybe we can draw up some people and have a Catholic prophetic. Would you like, how many like that conference? Yes. And, and, you know, we, we could do it. I'll, I'll, I'll get this conference together for you, all right? We'll, we'll do a big Fatima conference called Prophecy. Amen? And it'll be really good. So next, now I want you to go back. Say you're married to a woman called Catholic. How many years? You got, you got to think about it. If everybody goes down to verse 16, this is, this is, now, may I recommend, if you, if you want to renew your vows, get married, have your kids get married, your grandchildren get married, use these verses. He's, everybody with me? Hosea 2. Verse 16. Some people say they can't hear it. Am I yelling? No. I'm just turning up the volume. And she says patience back there. Even still they can't hear it. Lord, save us. Amen? All right, are you with me, dear? In that day, everybody on the line that day. Now, when you all go to heaven, you're going to be married. <coughs> the one you got now, forget about it. The one you had, not going to happen. The one you thought you missed, you missed. The one you dreamed about, <laughs> the nightmare is over. Okay, now. <laughs> Here's what I want us all to do. Dream a little dream of me. Okay. I, I, I listen to the 60s music and some of those songs are like, they get into your bones. And verse 16, and that day says the Lord, you will call me my husband. All right, now how do you say husband in Hebrew? Baal. What? I S H I is she, which means my man. Ish is man, I is my, so it's being my man. 
Okay? Ishi. Ishai. That's funny. Ishai. I S H I Ishai, which means my man. And no longer will you call me my Baal. Now, Baal was a perfectly good word for husband or master. And so that's why you have the word Ishi, I S H I. Everybody say Ishai. Ish is man, I is my man. So now, the Holy Spirit just showed me something new. When you go to heaven, what happens when you got married, ladies? Anybody here get married? When you got married, generally speaking, I don't know what they're doing today, you took on his name. Remember, ladies? So your name is Daisy. What a name. Okay, you take out their name. When we go to heaven, we take on his name. So in Revelation 2, 16 and 17, when you get a brand new name in glory, you're going to get a name that reflects divinity in who you will be. Revelation 2, 16 and 17. You're not going to be called Philip because you're not going to be called lover of horses. You're not going to be called Kathy. These names are over. Because God didn't name you those things. Your interesting parents did. Now you, they might think they got inspired by God to call you them. Or Jackie. I mean, God says something like, Miss Jackie. No, he's going to call you something better than Cupcake or something like that. Or, or Tootsie, right? Now look at, look at verse number 17. When you're married, I remove the names of the balls from her mouth. You can never, never, never speak of a past lover that you had. My mother tells me that she was going to marry a sailor, which wasn't my father. How many know I would not be here today? <laughs> Come here, thank God that I'm here. Everybody shake your head, yes, yes. all right? So with, with the directions that my mother was going in, I wouldn't have been here originally. Psalm one. Okay, but because God says no, it's not gonna happen. So all the names of your past lovers are God. So what were, what were the past lovers of this woman? Her money? Her wool, her oil, her grain. Remember all those lovers? It's called the comforts of life. When you're married, the only comfort of your life is that interesting person you married. Let me tell you something, Madeline. In Ten years from now, it's going to be more interesting. <laughs> You think so that with the water and the ice tape, when do you see what he turns into a few years from now? <laughs> and the flying man, the flying man. Wait till you see the flying man, madam. <laughs> you know what's going to happen to your glasses, madam? They're going to go like this. <laughs> now, they can't be mentioned at all. So my mother never really talked about, you know, I think his name was Bill. I was named after my mother's father, William. He died at the ripe old age of 92. My mother died a year ago, 94. All right now, box in with me, because I want to show you what marriage is all about. Now, marriage is a covenant. Everybody say covenant. covenant. How do you say that in... Um, Hebrew? Breet. B-R-E-E-T. -E but it's spelled B-E-R-I-T-H. Breet. Did ever say breet? Breet. So that's covenant. So now, what, when we understand covenant, it's not a contract. It's God unilaterally holding us up. When God unilaterally holds us up, even though we fall, He doesn't. How many think that's a good idea? Then He says to us, 
I'll make you a breed. Everybody underline that. I'll make you a breed. Everybody say breed. Even though it's spelled B E R I T H and we think it's two syllables in Hebrew, it's only one. Breed. I'll make you a breed. And in the breed, here's what's going to happen. Now, when you hear this, I know you're all smart. What do you hear Hosea saying about this covenant of marriage? I think it's really absolutely beautiful. And by the way, this is heaven. One of the most sustaining covenants is this one. And when you get married and the blessing of the marriage comes over you, anybody get married in the church? Yes. It says this was the only covenant not forfeited in the flood. It kept going on. So that's why when Noah got in, who did he bring in his sons? And then Mrs. Noah, Mrs. Ham, Mrs. Sham, Mrs. Cheese. I mean, they all started coming in. <laughs> Ham and cheese, you know. Whatever. <laughs> Mrs. Shem, Mrs. Ham, Cheese, Mrs. Japheth, remember? And by the way, we're all from one of them. Would you like to know who you're from? Yes. <laughs> if you're African, you're from Ham. If you're European, you're from Japheth. If you're Asian, And then if you're other, Asian, you're from the other. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So uh, probably everybody here would basically be from Japheth. Because the other one, Ham, would be African, and Shem would be Semites. Do you see there in the word Shem, Semites? Are you getting all this? Okay, next. And I will make your covenant on that day with the beasts of the field. Now, what's happening? Now, watch this. When you read the Bible, what's in the beginning is the end. What's in the end is the beginning. So where are we all going back to? Eden. Paradise lost. Paradise found. What happened in Eden? There you are. Standing there loving me. What happened to Adam? The side was open. Out came this beautiful woman called Kathy. And you said, va 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 boo. And now, there's the second Adam. The second Adam, his side was open, and out walks the church. And then the Father comes down, because you got brand new, brand new bodies, and you say, and you say, I? Is that you? You got a new dude, I think? And then the Father comes, and there's Yeshua HaMashiach, and there's I, and Jack says, This is so beautiful. And then the Father says to Jack, Get in the picture, you're in it too. Because his side was open. The maid of honor is Mama Mary. We Filipinos like to know that. And then there, there's your wedding. Mm -hmm. And so it's going back to the, what does it say there? Is, are you liking this yet? He says to underline verse, verse 18, the day with the beasts, the birds of the air, the creeping things of the ground, and I will abolish the bow. <laughs> now what's the bow? No more war. That means you'll never have a fight with your spouse. I will absolutely abolish it. There's, there's gonna be no, no war. Then he says there, the sword, war from, from the land. I'll make you lie down in safety. What is that song? Like? Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so you'll be in perfect rest, in perfect peace. See, when Kathy married Phil, she said, do you know Kathy was singing for 24 years? Heaven, I'm in heaven. And in fact, when, when Phil got married, they gave him cards at his reception. You know what many wrote on them? Good luck. <laughs> Nobody will ever say good luck to you again. They'll only say to you, Shalom. Yes. The breed is only Shalom. Yes. So this is a breed of Shalom. Amen? Yes. 
then he says to us there, is, is this good? Yes. I will make you lie down in safety. Look at verse 19. I will espouse you forever. So what does God say? There you are, take my hand, and we're halfway there. Somewhere, somehow. <laughs> you remember you How many sang at your wedding? I hope none of you went, oh no. Someday we will be together. No, that day you're together. Amen? Are you getting, I, God says, I will espouse myself to you. Somebody say, wow. So your marriage, that's why Revelation 19, your homie says this about it many times. You're going to your wedding bank. Now watch this. How many think you're getting good stuff? No. When you got married, Jesus number one proposes. Take my hand and we're happy. Now, where does he pr propose? He proposes at the well. John 4. When he proposes, he says to you at the well, get rid of all your gods. How many gods did she have? Five. So first comes the proposal. Second thing comes your ready ring. There you are. All right, now. The Lord puts a wedding ring on all of you. How many, how many are liking this already? Let me tell you something. I'm giving you good stuff. When you get your wedding ring, it's called, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 14, it's called the Holy Spirit. When you get the Holy Spirit, ready? You get all the promises guaranteed of what life will be for you. Do you understand what Sunday's feast is now? Third, are you getting this? Jesus is, by the way, I never wrote these notes down for anybody. Jesus is the virgin, and he has to shed his blood on So there comes the consummation of all things. Ladies, do you remember the shedding of the blood? And you can only do it once. Then, look at the order. This is biblical order. Then it's the wedding reception. Look at the order. This is now. This is your wedding plan. That's why, in this hour we live, I beg us to know about the Holy Spirit. Because He is your wedding ring. Ephesians 1, 14, the consummation of all things. He dies on the cross, it is finished. John 19, the blood is shed. Hebrews 9, verse 24. And then, the, your wedding reception, Revelation 19, 16. And then you, it's the first time you say, when you see him, because the veil will be taken from your face. And you will see God as he is. Because when you prepare for it, you're going to get a brand new body. And I'm looking at some of you right now. Please hurry up. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So how many like your wedding? the wedding. And then, <laughs> then in the book of Isaiah 55, 1 to 3, if you go there now. Let me tell you something, you're getting good stuff right now. Anybody knows Isaiah 55? When you're there, say amen. 
Not everybody's there yet. Okay, this bad read it. Go. Um, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to I like the word ho. Oh. Come to the water. That's an interesting word in Hebrew, isn't it? Ho! Oh. That means, hello! Mm. I mean, get ready! Ho! Oh. Everybody say ho. Oh. Oh. It doesn't have a bad connotation, okay? Ho. Mm. Oh. Ho. Oh. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And, and he, Jesus said, come to the water. Go ahead. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Now, watch what it says. You don't have any money, buy. Wait mm. a minute. <laughs> Somebody say, what does that mean? <laughs> if I don't have money, what do you got to get so I can pay? You get me? <laughs> Are you getting it yet? What's that called? Dun, dun, da, da. And by the way, just for your FYI, that's from a Shakespearean orgy, which you really shouldn't have at weddings. Mm. Wait, did anybody here have it? Did you have it earlier at your wedding? Bam, 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 bam? Yes. <laughs> you forgot already. You can't remember back 54 years ago. Did you have it at your wedding? Did you have it at your wedding? Oh. Did you have it with Miss Patty? You did? Did you come up the aisle to bump up and on? It's from a Shakespearean orgy. Because look, you didn't have me do this wedding because I would not have allowed you to marry the people you married. <laughs> now, what does it say? Come. Buy without price. How do you do that? Here I am. Now, how many have ever said, here I am to worship, here I am. Do you know what you're saying? Do you have any idea what you're saying, sister? I'm marrying you. When Kathy came up the aisle and saw Phil, she almost passed out. All right, go ahead. Me? Yes, go. Oh. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do now, what's the wine and milk? Wine is what you drink, Amos chapter 9. Milk is what? The land of Israel. So there's your honeymoon. Now, of course, you want your little dainties and delicacies. You want your lobster and your uh, red meat and uh, for those who want it, salmon. Mm. Or toxic tilapia. <laughs> it's toxic. Don't eat it. <laughs> Don't get tilapia. It's too toxic. Mm. Go. Yeah. Right, we Filipinos like to fish with the eyeballs. Like, oh my heavens! Yeah. Like, all right, go. That's the good stuff. Uh. All right, go. I mean, go. Oh me. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? So here, here is the wedding invitation. So you put over there. This is the invite. I mean, like your wedding day, right? Invitation, proposal, your wedding ring, the virgin shedding the blood, the wedding, and this is the first time that you'll ever hear the word hallelujah in the New Testament. So now, how many ever said hallelujah? When you say hallelujah in church, you're saying, I'm married. Here's what you're saying. I'm going to the chapel and I'm going to get married. Now, I want to give you soon a retreat on the Song of Songs. Oh, that's a good nice I gave you one on the Our Father, I gave you on the Beatitudes. I love to give you one on the Song of Songs. And then you're all going to do this. You're all going to wear white and you're going to come up the aisle. <laughs> Amen. And it's not that person next to you, sir. You only have a few more years of it. Then it's over. Okay? How many like that already? Did everybody get the plan? 
This is heaven, sir. You like to hear about heaven? I got more teachings. I got a brand, brand new, brand new, brand new talk on heaven to give you. Brand new, never gave it before. I'll give it to you, maybe in a week or so. Everybody get the picture? Do you like it? All right, now, back with me, please. Hosea, chapter 2. Especially for the third row. Hosea 2, we're almost done. I'll abolish the bow, I'm in verse number 18. Abolish the bow, the sword, and war from the land. I'll make you write down the city. Verse 19. I will espouse you to me. I will espouse you now when you get espoused. This is what happens to you immediately. I will espouse you in righteousness. Everybody say in righteousness. Now watch this. Turn to the person next to you. This is really good. When you get married to the Lord, this is the expression, the two become one. If you live in righteousness, which I believe everybody here does, I believe you're an outstanding Christian, when you live in your faith, it's God's life living through you. When God's life living through you, the two become one. It's called righteousness. And this is called again, sadiq. Yes, in Hebrew. So, when you, when you get married and you say, did anybody here say your yes already? By the way, you should all have said your yes. Then it's the sadiq. Now, number two. Turn to first section, this is really good. Really What's the next word he says there? I will make you, I will spouse you in righteousness and in justice now. How do you say justice again? Miss Pat? Mishpat. Mishpat. Justice. Now, Mishpat justice is the end results of your life. Now when we die, you don't have, um, you get mercy now, then justice, and then you live in mercy for the rest of your life by being in heaven. But watch this, this is really good. Turn the person, this is really good. When you get married to the Lord, when you get married to each other, Patty should said to you constantly, Lee, by being married to you, I feel like I'm in heaven. <laughs> and she said, Lee, you are my cup of tea. You are my gallina de la primavera. <laughs> that means spring chicken. Okay. Now, when, when the Lord proposes to you, He enters into you through righteousness. Sadiq, now, when you live with Him, you get justice. That you already pass through any judgment there is. Because you won't be judged because you're with the one living in righteousness. Now watch this. Turn to the person next to you. This is really good. Now when you get married, I know what you're thinking already, dear. Oh, yeah. Now, even after 54 years, because man, your eyes do go to heaven a lot. Who can? 55 <laughs> this month. Now, watch this. This is really good. When you have Sadiq and Mishpat, that's the name of God's throne. Those are the pillars, right? That's right. You, you sit on God's throne, God sits on Mishpat, and God sits on Sadiq. How many like this so far? How many think you have marriage like that right now? You think it's so beautiful? You got a lot to teach Joe about. So this is Sadiq and Mishpat. So I get to see Jack and go, Joe, Mishpat, Sadiq. <laughs> now watch this. 
Oh, you want to hear the next part of this? Yeah. When you have the throne, by the way, the Holy Spirit's teaching me all this right now, too. I never heard this either. This is really good. When you have the mishpat and then and the, the, the sadiq, when you're married, you have what is called in Revelation 3, I stand at the door and knock, you come into me, I come into you. When you read the last church laid to see, Revelation 3, it's the wedding invitation to come in. And it means, are you ready? Are you ready? So, if somebody's in the coffin and you put up that picture with Jesus knocking on the door, I told you, <coughs> literally, it means it's over. How many know a lot of people have the wrong idea what it means? Yes. The literal meaning means, by the way, when you go there and say, oh, do you know what that means? Jesus is knocking at the door? It means your days are over, baby. I would recommend you share that, but not in that context. Okay. May God give you prudence and wisdom. So what happens is when you knock at the when Jesus knocks at the door, it says this in Revelation 3 20, 21. You will sit with me on the on the divan. What's the divan? The Sadiq and the Mishpah. And that means you're married. How many like marriage? Do you like marriage? Wouldn't you like me to have done your pre canis sir? All right, your, your wife is listening, by the way. Her eyes just went toward God, so let's hear a good one. <laughs> Brother Phil. There's a picture. There's a picture when you go to, you've never been to a wake. People do drop, you know. Sometimes behind the coffin, there's a picture of Jesus knocking at the door. You never seen that? No door knock, right? A lot of people say, how beautiful that picture is. Of course. But you know what it literally means if you study the context? Your time's up. And I don't know if you would put that picture up saying, his time's up, he's gone. Or they give out those little cards. When my mother died, she was the only person ever in this funeral parlor that had a card called the mother of a priest. Every single person said, give us that card. So, it's Jesus knocking. Now, when we go, when you get married, when you sit with your beloved, you're going to get nothing but righteousness and justice. In other words, let's spell it out. Let's spell it out clearer. When you get married to the Lamb, ready? You're getting exactly what He deserves for you. What He deserves? What He deserves for you. He gets everything. So how many know you're going to the wedding of the Lamb? I can't emphasize enough your wedding day is going to be spectacular. Now, I want you all to put on your perfume. I want you all to live a better life in Christ. Amen? That's the wedding day. And every day, Lily is the same as Heaven, I'm in heaven. How do you solve a problem like that? Do, 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 do. Amen? Amen? Now, back with me. Now, guess what else is on there? We got Sadiq. We got Nishma. Ready for the next one? I, I thought I'd be done with this, but this is, a, this, this is really good. And somebody wants me to go slow. Also, you get the essay. Essay. Now, this is, this is, this is the undying, steadfast, this is the mercy, right? This is the mercy. Now, I told you many times, everybody has a heart. 
Now, the name of love. Stop. In the name of love. I hope you appreciate what I got to do. I have to get my point across. When you have a heart full of love, it's called an aha. Everybody say aha. When you live it, what flows out of you from your aha, which is love in Hebrew, is the hesed, the verse. So every time that God looks at you, He says, When you wake up in the morning, even though you're never going to wake up because it's only one day, He's going to look at you and say, Yvette, love you. And He's going to take, Jesus is going to take a rose, and He's going to bling a bling. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm gonna follow you wherever you go. I, I love you, 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 love you, love you, love you, love you. How many like this as a wedding song? How many like to hear that at your wedding? Instead of you take Donald to be your husband. Good luck, sister. All right, off you go. See you 55 years later, June. All right, 2019. Are you getting this? Now the next thing is steadfast what? Steadfast love. So from the Baha is <laughs> So how many love how many like marriage now? Now let me ask you. How many don't raise your hand on this one? How many have that kind of marriage? How many would like that marriage? That's marriage. Now, can you see why I said, if you know anybody getting married and they're looking for a reading, that's the reading. Yeah, reading. Now, will they get all that explanation on their wedding mass? No. Will I give it to have me do it? Yes. If I was a Jewish rabbi, I'd get $800 a smack. But anyway. So, here is the meaning of marriage. Now, do you love Kathy that much? Yes. Well, Kathy's going, oh. <laughs> All right, next. Yes, anybody have any questions? Miss Jackie, you have a question? So when you have an aha, when you have an aha, it flows out of you. Flows out of you. Only whatever flows out of you is a chesed. I love with aha, and then when I look at you, you can do nothing wrong in my eyes. Because you know why? I am the fullness of mercy. You can do nothing wrong. Let me, let me give you scripture on that. The Holy Spirit just gave me another scripture. I think the Holy Spirit. All right, ready? Are you getting this? Do you like marriage yet? Yes. How many ever heard marriage like this? Yes. <laughs> okay, now, make sure this, this has got to go. Paul gets this all over the world, right? Now, watch this. I want you to go with me. Hold your spot. We'll be right back. I, I'm ready to get on the next, but this is so good. Is this rich or what? And by the way, this is heaven, by the way. Heaven. I have a question. Yes, sir. Why is it so that for They didn't ask me to do it. All right, go with me. Hold your spot. We'll be right back because we've got another verse. Miss Jackie, are you getting this? Is it good? Yeah. Now, everybody go with me to James 3. James 3. <laughs> Verse 17. When you're in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. I should have been director. Yes. Or a singer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you there? Yes. All right, now, did you get the verse 17? What, what is about the love and the what sincerity? Have you seen that line? Do you see it? The wisdom? Yes? Are you getting good stuff? 
Hebrews, who wrote James? <laughs> James, that's very good. Now go to verse 7, let's see, 17. The wisdom from above is pure. So when you get married, this is pure. How many would like to have a spouse that everything he, she or she said was always pure? Imagine. Next, number two. Then peaceable, gentle, open to reason. Full of, there it is. Full of mercy and good fruits. And remember we to, we're told in the Bible, now watch that, let me tell you something good. When you have wisdom, there are fruits. When you have the Holy Spirit, there's fruit. Okay, so if you underline that there, without uncertainty or insincerity, it's always true. That's marriage. Is that beautiful, Miss Okay, everybody with me? Anybody need to have a thought? All right, back with me, please, to Hosea, chapter 2, ma'am. You're welcome. We're almost done. I just want to, now watch this, this is really good. I don't know if we'll get to the next covenant yet, but that's all right, right? I just want you to get this covenant of marriage down. Is this book great or what? You know, just by doing this, there's no way humanly possible I could think of this. No way. No, there, there is no way I could put this together. There's just no way. So, I mean, just in that fact alone, this is divine. Yes. This is way beyond mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. But if, because it's in the Word of God, it can be done. Mm -hmm. All right, back with me, with you. Mm -hmm. I'm in verse number 20. I will espouse you in faithfulness. What is the meaning and what's the missing ingredient? Faithfulness. And we'll not. Emuna. Faithfulness. You know, my whole life, how many have ever heard a talk on fidelity? Just the word fidelity. I only heard one once. It was one of the most fantastic talks I've ever heard. Fidelity. That I will be with you. I will never let you down. How many want to have a spouse like that? How do you say that in Hebrew? Everybody we say, Amunah. Mm -hmm. I will espouse you in faithfulness. Then he says there, how many, like, how many like this marriage? You know, if I had a spouse like this, I said, let's get married now. Amen? But who did you get married? You got married next to a bopper that's broken. A broken, a broken bopper. You had a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But when we go to glory, you're going to be married to Hesed Sadiq Mishpat Now watch this. I'm still in Hosea, man. Chapter 2. Now look at verse 20. You shall know the Lord. Underline no. I'm, I'm running out of space here. But I want to keep it all together so you know what marriage is about. When our first parents and Eve got pregnant, in Genesis 4, 1, the Bible says she knew her husband. The word I told you about a thousand times is yada. What does it mean to know, to know somebody? When you're married, you can only know one person. I say, I know your kids, no you don't. Because you can only have intimacy <coughs> with your spouse. You see him and her as he or she is, totally. Nobody else can see that except you. And so the two of you become one.
That's yada. So now I'm going to say to you, I'll say, Rita, do you know the Lord? How many ever heard somebody say, do you know the Lord? Now, do you know what they mean? By the way, those who ask you do you know the Lord, they don't know what it means either. So. <laughs> now when I say to you, do you know the Lord? And imagine if you both understood this as marriage and you were married like this. And if you ever felt short a little bit before you went to bed, you would renew this covenant. So you married 25 years to the same person? Get her up the aisle, sir. And you lay up on her and say, Miss Kathy, I'm giving you cassette, Sadiq, Mishpat, Yada, and Luna. Ha ha ha. And then Kathy said, I understood every word you said. <laughs> and everybody on your 25th would say, I didn't hear a word, I understood a word they said. This is marriage. Now watch this. Is this good? Then he says to us there, that's why, that's why I, I'm glad you said the covenants. That's a great idea. And this is the best part of marriage. Amen? And by the, way, by the way, if you haven't experienced this with your spouse, you're going to. Not with the person not necessarily you marry, but with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Okay, are you getting this? Yeah. Now, he says there, look at verse number, chapter 2, ma'am, Hosea. <laughs> Look at 21 now. And in that day, there you are, standing there loving me. And that day, says the Lord, I will answer the heavens, and they shall answer the earth, and the earth shall answer the grain, the wine, and the oil. What was she after? I was after in this earth happy things a house, a car, money, horses, TVs, pools. I was after a mega bucks, only Yankees. I was after all these things. And what, it, what is, when you do all of this, what do you say? You got way beyond that now. Now, are you ready for that? And they shall answer, yes, and I will sow him myself in the land. I will have pity on not pity. Those kids that you had, they don't have those names anymore. And they will say, I will not say to my people, you are my people. And underline their verse number 23. For you are my God. What are you saying? The wedding vow is, that's your wedding vow. When you look at him and say, you are my God. He says, I take you, Jackie, yes, to be my wife. <laughs> and Jackie starts crying because she does not those stuff. And then Jackie says, For you are my God, you alone are my joy. Psalm 89. And 16. And also 89. Psalm 89 is the covenant. Are, are you ready for this? If you flip down to Psalm 80, did you enjoy marriage? Yes. All right, everybody go with me to Psalm 89, please. And then we'll start getting ready for the second covenant. Is this good? This is super positive tonight, isn't it super positive? I wish I could give this to every pre a session in the world. I told you, one of my new jobs is a I'm going to a Holy Spirit boutique so the ladies will wear their dresses up to here again mm -hmm. and set it all the way down here and everything else. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because when they walk in and they're fat and the, and the bluff shows, they say, how beautiful they are. They're not beautiful. You lied. <laughs> Amen? You got to wear clothes. You got to wear white clothes dignified for your wedding. Do I hear Amen. Amen. Tell you, that's my Holy Spirit boutique. All right, now, everyone with me in Psalm 89? Yes. If you're there, say amen. amen. All right, is that good? Now, what does the first word say, everyone? Amen. Okay. 
Can't hear me. Is that beautiful? Now, when you're married. Right. So, this is called this is called God's covenant. I will celebrate. I will sing of your mercy, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim. There's the emuna. Your faithfulness to proclaim. Your merciful love was established forever. Your faithfulness is firm as the heavens. Is that great? You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen. Is that what? Guess what? Remember when Jesus is called the chosen one at his baptism? Hello, you're all chosen, not frozen. Remember that is. Uh, <coughs> remember that is. Remember that is John 15. You have not chosen me, I have chosen you. Okay, you got it? Chosen. And I sworn to David, my servant, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Selah. What does Selah mean? Musical interlude. Okay, pause, but even more so, better than pause. You can put in there pause, that's correct. But it means, they were singing this, so all of a sudden you hear, <laughs> How many ever walked into a church and somebody's going, <laughs> you don't remember those moments? All right. That is the first covenant of the Bible. You ready for the second? The second one is, it doesn't start off good, but it ends spectacular. Amen? Are you getting all this? By the way, all the covenants will end spectacular like this. Amen? Because they're the breed. Because God is unilaterally working. Okay, what is your question, Doctor? Well, what you, I heard you say earlier that when God makes covenant, He's the one that holds up the covenant. Unilateral. But that's done because of His faithfulness, correct? That's correct. The emunah. Everybody say emunah. Mm -hmm. Right now. Any other questions? Miss Eileen? <coughs> Miss Jackie? Jackie, Miss? Miss Diane, are you getting this? Right now, we just finished, but there's so much more things to say. We've been through Ephesians, and I technically, I technically go all the way through that again, and that would be great, but I'm not going to do that, because I've already been through that with you a hundred times. Is it worth going 101? Of course. But um, we'll move on in our study. The second thing, the second covenant is what? The rainbow. The rainbow. What? <laughs> okay, everybody, let's do the rainbow. Now, everybody go to Genesis. How many ever studied the rainbow before? All right, everybody go to Genesis. We're going we're to land in, we're going we're gonna to study now Genesis 9, but I just want to start in Genesis 6, okay? We're going to go, second covenant is the rainbow. Everybody say rainbow. Rainbow. Okay, now, I just want to start in chapter 6 uh, to give you a verse or so. The world is wicked. The only different thinking between Catholic thinking right now and Protestant thinking is Catholics say the world is wicked. Catholics say the world is very wicked. Protestants say the world is wicked, so we agree. But the Protestant thinking will say, the world is totally depraved. That's not Catholic thinking, if you hear them saying. We don't say it's totally depraved, because we believe that God can work in elements of good. Even the people who don't believe in Jesus, um, even if they do something like holding open a door, or maybe somebody was thirsty and giving you a cold drink. So there's elements of good. So be, to be totally depraved, you don't even do that. So that's, that's the different thinking. Now, I, I just want us to go just to a verse. And this verse really bothers me. Chapter 6 of Exodus, verse of Genesis. Genesis. I said Genesis, you say Exodus. <laughs> Did I say Exodus? Yeah. I just want, well, I do that to see if you're paying attention. Genesis chapter 6. Verse 5. And then we're going to study chapter 9. You got it? You got it? 
and then from nine, then we'll go into the third covenant. Not tonight. We got so much to say on this because we want you to soak this in. All right? Because I, um, I'm so glad you suggested this is really good. I, I've never done this before. All right, now look at verse five, and this is the, this is called the saddest verse in the Bible. Mm. The Lord saw the wickedness that was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of the heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. Okay, now, when we get into to chapter 9, we're going to study the whole chapter together on the second covenant. The word wickedness, remember I told you many times, every, every time in the Bible the word wickedness is there, you can't be redeemed. So every time you read, they were wicked. They're going to hell. And so if you call somebody wicked, they're so wicked. And sometimes I'll say, what evil? You hear me saying that. And uh, right now in Rhode Island, I, I would not be, I would not want to be my bishop who said that, but I would be very proud of my bishop did say that. And so I'm inviting you, if you have an, an extra stamp or whatever, encourage, encourage Bishop Tobin about the evil that's been to say, I love you, we're praying for you, we support you. Friends from New Jersey. So here he said, the, the wickedness of the Lord was great, the, the, the wickedness of the people of men was great in the earth. Does anybody say a parallel today? And every imagination of the thoughts, everything you were thinking was evil. Your thoughts were putrid. Then he says there, and the thoughts of his heart was continually, it was night and day. How many of you ever met a person that's all they think about? They never change their thoughts. And then the Lord was sorry. What does that mean? He was crying. And this is the hardest thing he had to do, is create man to sin against him. So that he could send his son to redeem man. We were depraved. Do the Catholics believe depravity? Yes, but not Catholics won't say total depravity. So that's why we'd say, don't kill a person um, on death row. Uh, we don't believe in death row presently because they could have a last minute conversion. Amen? All right, now, I just want that little background. Now flip to nine. All right, nine, nine we're gonna have a field day there. Okay? Chapter nine of Genesis. So we're gonna go all the way through Genesis nine. Is this good stuff? There's so many, as I do all this, there's so many studies that are popping in my head we could do. How many of you can't exhaust this book? We finished all the way to Luke, but how many know this is equally as good, eh? All right, ready, ready to go, chapter nine? All right, covenant two. Did you like covenant number one? Yes. Okay, now. Dun, 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 dun. Covenant number two. The rainbow. Dorothy? Oh, thank you. Okay. She's still in the back there. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Okay, now the first thing we hear is God keeps repeating that to every generation. I'm personally convinced. I had, I, I had another brother he was born October 3rd. Recently, I just, we just discovered his birth certificate. My brother's name was John. He lasted only 12 hours. He was, thanks be to God, he died because he would have been deaf and, and uh, mute and everything else. My mother did baptize him, so we have John. So Lord willing, when we all go to heaven, you'll meet my brother John. So he never experienced more than 12 hours. He's a premium. He was six months and he came out. But I'm personally convinced, my mother had a baby a year. My father wanted kids. 
I think I would have been one of 12 right about now. <laughs> Can you imagine? And that means we would have moved out of the house for and I would never have seen you to heaven. So this is God's way of saying, Billy is the last one, Bernadette. And then that's enough, okay. So God took Papa home and he received his first communion on his wedding day. So he converted to Catholicism on his wedding day. They didn't have RCA back then. You know. mm -hmm. So now, put a little note there that the covenants that God gives, he never takes away. If you hold your spot there, and if we're looking for a cross-reference, we can only go backwards. So if we go all the way back to chapter 1, verse 26, 27, 28. Now, we gave you the two powers that you have. Does everybody know the two powers you have? Subdue and dominion. When you're in Christ, are you all in Christ? You have those powers back. But now we need another whole session on how to get live in those powers. How many would like to have know the powers of subduing? Eileen's going to say to me, "Do a Bible study." I I, I know she's thinking of it right now. <laughs> Amen. Now, everybody, go to chapter one of Genesis, verse 26, 27, 28. Do you see it there? Be fruitful and. Do you see it there? What verse is that? 28, right? Do you see it there? Now, that's, put, in, put a little note in there. This is God's original plan. Now, to get us into the covenant, does he change his ways? No. My ways are not your ways. And it's, by the way, we just read it, Isaiah 55. Everybody with me? Now, when you get married, which is covenant number one, you're supposed to have children. Sometimes, right about now, you want to send them all back. <laughs> but they're all out. Amen? And i got to show you my, my picture of my great-nephew looking at my other great-nephew. Okay, everybody with me? Everybody see, everybody see the covenant there? Now, so the first thing is, if we're going to see this rainbow, We're going to see, you've got to be fruitful and multiply. Bear fruit and multiply. It's God's plan. You're not going to like going to say this, to have big families. It's God's plan. That's, that's the plan of God. And when, one day Ralph Martin, who we all heard a million times, was in a restaurant with his six kids. Somebody said to Ralph, where are all these kids? He says, they're mine. And they went, oh. <laughs> and he says, he smiled, more for heaven. The, you, know, you know the other cafe. When the Herbers meet, they meet and they have a family reunion. I think where they go in San Diego, they travel all over the country for family. Do you know how many people they're going to have at their family? 75 people. Can you imagine having 75 brothers, sisters, cousins, and like, what's your name? Okay, back with me to Genesis 9. So, that's God's plan. Amen? Are, are, are we with me from verse 2? Now, this is really good. Our time is almost up. This is really good. Amen? The fear of you... And the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. Now, what's a curse that happened? How many ever tried to catch a bird? And you go, here, birdie, birdie. <coughs> and you went up to it and it, it saw you and said, out of here. Anybody ever try to catch a bird when you're a cookie? No. <laughs> Did you ever try to, Irma still tries to catch them. <laughs> She's Mrs. Seuss. She talks to animals. Because they run away because there's a fear of death on us. So when they look at us, they go, they say in bird language, I 
out of here. <laughs> now some of you have white dogs. And you would go Gucci, Gucci, Goo. <laughs> and, and so what do they have to be? Tamed. Amen. I'll bear with you. So what happens is because of our sinfulness, because of our saying no, we put on the kingdom that we're in a fear of the animals. Except, of course, if you're St. Anthony of Padua, which is next Thursday. He, he, you know what he did? He got so frustrated with the people of Padua, he went to the lake and he started preaching. And all the fish popped out. There you go. And St. Anthony lived to the ripe old age of 36. How many know we'd all be dead right about now? Everybody shake your head, yes. And so he went. And why do you see why do you see St. Francis with the animals? Why do you bless these interesting creatures? And you have cats with unbelievable names. Amen. <laughs> The names are off the charts. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty baby and whatever the heck you call these things. And so why? We associate with that St. Francis was so gentle, they would come to him. Yes, you're on. No, no. <laughs> no, the whole idea of covenant, which God is bringing us back to, there's union. Now when you go to heaven, yes, sister, I do believe there's going to be interesting creatures there. But not a resurrected puppy. I don't believe we're going to see All right, now, there will be interesting creations there. Flying dogs. No, that's not going to happen. So um, what you're going to see is you're going to be one with creation again. No, please do not think creation is equal to you. No, no, no. You are made in God's image and likeness. The dog is not made in God's image and likeness. <laughs> okay, so what are the names of the other dogs that will be in heaven? Oh, they're all in heaven. In fact, somebody gave, true story, somebody gave her a mask card for the dog. Can you imagine what I got to put on? The That is, they didn't know. All right, so, so, so I would say call up, call up, call up that rectory and change the name. Now, Next. <laughs> Go ahead. No, so, so prior to this, there was, there was no fear of man. No. If you read Genesis 2, verse 18, it says, Adam named them. Yes. So when I name something, I have power over it. What's the first thing when we say to one another, what's your name? What's the second thing we say? Where do you live? How old are you? <laughs> then we can see we're done the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird of the air upon everything that creeps on the ground while the fish of the sea and into your hand they underline that into your hand they are delivered now what, what's God doing here now when does everybody know that prior to this moment everybody was a vegetarian No me. Why? Because how many have ever had a good steak? What do they love putting on it? The au jus. The juice. Would you like a juicy burger? Like here's here's McDonald's now. We now have real meat. You mean I didn't eat real meat all those other times? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Burger King, they're just coming out in a, in a week or so or two, whatever. They're coming out with meatless burgers again. And they said they're delicious. If anybody wants to try them. So, um, what do you like about the meat? You love the juice. So you put tearing your bird and then you get that little squeezy thing, the little to go. Little gummy. You, <laughs> you don't realize you do that? And you say, it makes it good, and you go chicka 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 chicka. You don't know your, you don't know your little chicka chickas? Yes. All right, amen. So now, 
God is starting the covenant all over again. So what does he do to start the covenant? He says, be fruitful and multiply. Now, when you go on the boat, that was the float. There was two groups of animals. In chapter six, seven, and eight, there was the clean and the unclean. What did you have to do with the clean? You kill them for sacrifice. So as soon as they're getting off the boat, row, row, row your boat. Now, how many days did it rain? Forty days and forty nights. Are you getting this? Now watch this. How many know you're getting very good stuff here? Forty days and forty nights. You like Genesis? Forty and forty. All right, now, when it did the 40 and 40, it doesn't mean they came out right away. They would be very wet. It took 150 days for the water to recede. How many know we miss that detail? When Jackie teaches those little boppers, I don't know if they know what the word recede means. Right now, the Arkansas River is going to crest in a day or so another five their house roofs are already underwater. Arkansas is devastated right now. And guess what they have spinning in the Gulf right now? A hurricane. If it's a boy, it's a hemicane. So what's, what is God doing to the central part of our country? He's sending it underwater. We've just lost so far $35 million of crops. So we're going, we're going to see your fruit going to go. Amen. So, how many ever heard a few years ago, you better plant your own food. So now, do the math. How much time, how many days are they on the boat? Alright, do the math. Yeah. Is that a lot of time on the boat? <laughs> so how many days before they got off? 190, how many days is that? Six and a half months, seven months? Wow. Wow, do you, do you can see? Now what would you do if you were on a boat? For seven months. I, I, I've been floating on, on, on boats. I can't stand those things. Phil could take Kathy all she wants. But when I go to the pool and, and the babes are down there, I'm like, sister, put some clothes on. <laughs> so I gotta go at seven o'clock in the morning, eat my breakfast and run and just throw covers over my head with an air conditioned thing as the boat does this. Amen? We're going to continue there with very exciting, unbelievable background that you've never heard before. In fact, this is so outstanding, you're going to have to do the happy dance. Good sir. What is your name, sir? You mentioned about the animals being separated between the clean and the unclean. Yes. The clean for the purpose of sacrifice. Is this the beginning of animal sacrifice? Yes. Is, is, is yes. Sacrifice? yes. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Yes, Miss Jack. The clean and the unclean. Sacrifice. Yes. Good stuff, Miss Eileen. So that means you can eat the unclean? No. The un no, the unclean are so that the whole creation would be seen again. The, un the clean you would sacrifice to God. Because when they got off the ark, which we're going to find it, we're going to find all this stuff out. They had a sense that they had to owe God something. And how, what do I give God? I had to give him, I can't give him money. You know, even though you and I give money on Sunday, if you're giving it grudgingly, you know what God says to you? Keep it. If you don't cough it up, I give it. Another 50, yay! 100, wee! 
Yeah, if everybody went to Mass and gave 100 bucks, the pastor would pass out. Good stuff? Yes, sir. He's asking another question, Madam. Mm -hmm. Madam Fifi. What did God require that of them, or did they, was that something that they did instead? Um, God didn't say do it, but their heart said the man did it. Who are we in front of that we got to, the sacrifice means I got to bow down. This is awesome. And that we're going to get into the second covenant. Is this good? Madam, yes sir. The fact that you mentioned that any covenant God, God established with man is never, is never revoked. Right. right? Is, that, is that one of the arguments against replacement theology? That yes. These, these are still yes. God never says I'll never flood. But I want to flood the earth again. The whole earth. That's interesting, huh? So we're, what's our mid-second? We're under, we have never seen these floods ever. It broke all the records. I mean, Arkansas is under water. I've never been to Arkansas yet. Little Rock is gone. It just floated, it's heading toward New Jersey right about now. It is scary. Yes, sir. Isn't a good way to think of these, uh, rather, if I could say, an odd collection of uh, covenants, one's uh, circumcision and others a rainbow, that the thing to remember is to try to figure out what do they represent spiritually? Yes. They're physical things. Yes. Like sacraments. Yes. But they're part of a, an arrangement, not more than an agreement, it's part of marital vows. Yes. And that, what is the spiritual component of yes. that? Yes. Is the rainbow. Yes. What is circumcision about spiritually? Yes. Although you do have to practice it physically. Yes. What is it about that? Yes. That you bring you closer. Absolutely. We'll be getting into that. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Yes. Did anybody learn anything new? Yes. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the the covenants. We thank you for the ultimate covenant. Wait till we do that covenant, the blood which will be the best we're going to be soaring on those days, about when we get into the power of the blood of the Lamb. And so, Father, help us to, to live in the covenants. Thank you for marriage. Thank you for all my blessed people that are beautifully married here, and thank you for their witness to the world. And if they're struggling through the marriage, bless them and consecrate their lives, and may their spouse know what marriage is all about. Thank you for the covenant of the, of the rainbow. And thank you, Lord, what you're going to be teaching us there until we get to the power of the blood. By the blood of the Lamb, we are washed clean and saved. Glory to Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.